Right, today we're gonna create a mug, something nice and simple for you. You just move around using Alt and your various mouse buttons. If you scroll with the middle mouse button with the Alt held down, scrolling away, then left mouse button is around and around, right mouse button is pan left and right. So we zoom out a bit and let go of Alt, of course, and then we create a cylinder because it's going to be a mug, and that shows basically where it's going to begin, where the centre of the mug will be, or the centre of the uh, the cylinder. <coughs> right over here, you'll notice that the coordinates are the centre of where we're going to start our cylinder. We can access those just by pressing Tab. So we'll do that instead of moving the mouse around here. You can see they change when you move the mouse because that's where it thinks that the uh, base of the cylinder is going to be. So you just press Tab on the keyboard and press 0. And that will start it right in the very center of those crosshairs there. Okay, so then you apply. And you can see there's... <clears throat> there's the basic cylinder and again over here this will change according to what radius you want so we'll go for 10 that's a nice sort of thing so again you press tab over to the box and then you just type 10 and then you press tab again and it highlights the apply button so just press return and that's set the radius to 10 now the next thing as you can see over here is the height so just drag it up or down as soon as you like the look of the height, just alt tab over there and we'll make it 20. Because that's a nice amount. And then return to apply again, after pressing tab to go into that. Now, these white circles, there's one on top and one below, that's for closed surfaces. If you want to close the cylinder, because you can, as you can see, we can see right through at the moment. It's it's an empty cylinder, like a magic trick thing. Um, so if you just click on one, the bottom one, you can see it's turned to red and it's filled that in. So we can do the same on the top, and it's filled that one in. You can unselect them to empty them by just clicking on it again, and that will take you back to where it was. Same for top and bottom. Okay, but we want them filled in. And then we have, <coughs> excuse me, over here we have points per section and number of sections. So number of sections is basically the height, how many sections going up or down you have. And it's eight, which is a good number for a cap. You know, it's a good number to begin with because you know you'll get nice space for the handle and all those sort of things, which are based on where the sections are basically, so they're nicely spaced at eight with that. You can increase them and you can just see what's happening over here where you get more and more. We'll go back down to eight because that's what we want. And you can see these all get modified as well when you do stuff over here, these numbers. That's the number of points which are those little bits in between there which we can select down here, but um, I'll show you that in a moment. But um, then we have points per section and as we increase that you can see we end up with more sides to our shape it still maintains the original with that where we close it but um, we just want a flat side facing straight down because it will be easier to model that way and I'll explain that in a minute so 10 sides that's fine you may think that doesn't look like a cup it looks more like some sort of weird hexagonal barrel thing but well you're completely right sort of but um let's click validate to finish that there as you can see it's got a top and a bottom filled in like we wanted and it's got the right number of sides there uh, sections so that's that's eight that we wanted you might think well there's only what seven there but these are the sections uh, I gotta fly here. Get off.
Stop it. You can't learn hexagon as well. Right. Um, you know, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which is fine. But as you can see, there's our basic barrel shape. Right. To get it to do what I just did, to go from that to where I could edit it, I just double clicked on it. So if you just double click it with the left button, and there you go, you get all this sort of blue stuff. Ooh, lovely, isn't it? Right, um, to change that, because at the moment you're on a variable selection tool where you can select whatever you're pointing at. So that's the line there, that's the flat surface there, and these are the points in between. It's lovely, which is that one there, see, auto select. Then you have the points, so if you click on that, you'll only highlight the points, you won't highlight the line or the flat surface. Uh, that one's edges, so that's the lines there, so you highlight whichever lines. But you can see there's a slight problem with highlighting lines in the surface behind that one, so it's not ideal. But, um, <coughs> well, you, you'll learn in time to select the lines closest to you, hopefully. You know, it's not a foolproof method, of course. Sometimes you do click through and do the wrong thing. Then there's this one, which is faces, of course, which is just that there. Selecting all the faces. And that won't select through, which is, you know, a good thing. That's why I like that one more than the edges. Um, and that's just select object, which will select the whole thing and take it back to where we were. Which we can also access, if we go back on faces, just by clicking off, dov double click. So we click off double click and you can see it's gone back to object and we got that there that we can edit again. So let's go on the auto select because that allows us access to all these other tools in one go. <coughs> um, right, so we want two faces. So we'll go with that face there because this is going to be the handle because we've got a basic cup. And if we hold down shift then and click that that box there, that face there. So that gives us two, which is good. You know, if you hold shift down, you can click and select faces wherever you want. Yeah, as long as you hold shift down when you click. But if you do it again over the top, then it'll unselect them or deselect them, which is good for you know if you accidentally select too many and you're oh no, let's get rid of that. There, yeah. see, nice and simple. And you can of course. Once you've pressed one down, you can just press Alt and move around, same as usual. And, yeah, do all that sort of stuff. Right, so let's get rid of that. Right, so we've got our basic... These are the bases of the handle. So now, what I'm going to do, up here, vertex modeling, you've got all these tools, and there's quite a few of them. But um, we'll use a few. But we have these fast extrude, sweep surface, and extrude surface. And you may be wondering what they are. But these are the main ones we'll be using. The fast extrude can also be accessed if you press Control. I'm using a PC. Uh, so if you press Control, you can see we get that. And we have that, which is between the two surfaces that you selected. So if we deselect, we'll select that one and keep shift down and select that one. And then let go, and you can see this is now in the middle of those two surfaces. So let's go back to what we had. Oh, let's deselect that. We'll click one there, and then hold shift down and click there. And that's in the middle of those two. So that means you're going to manipulate those two boxes, which you can do with this gizmo in the middle. Um, right, so we have the extrude. We have fast extrude there, and sweep surface, and extrude surface. And that will basically allow us to take a surface, the faces usually, well for me it is anyway, and extrude them, as in pull them out. To form an extrusion, to pull something from something, and yeah, create an elongated version because you extrude plastic bowls and things, and that's how they're made. Yeah, you learn something every day, see. So, anyway, the fast extrude turns into that. 
which looks a bit strange, you know. But then if you turn it on a the side, then you can see it's directly in relation to the flat surfaces. It's pointing straight away from that. And you've got a little cube and the circle there. But um, if we press escape, then that goes back to object select. So then we'll go back onto auto and we'll select our surfaces again. That one, hold shift down, that one there. And then we'll go back to. Uh, this can be accessed via holding control down on a PC instead. But of course, you can stay, see it's still there when I don't hold control down because I picked fast extrude up there. So then, what we're doing now, this moves the surfaces that you're extruding in the direction of the arrow. So you can move out or you can move in. And that is quite literally inside the object as you can see. So we want it sticking out because the handle comes out on a cup because it'd be weird the other way around. So we pull that out. And it's only those two that we selected so it's those two it works on. And that's our extrusion there. So if I press control and keep it down, you can see we've got that back. I'm keeping control down now. This one here does scale instead of direction. So it'll make it larger or smaller, but it'll do it in relation to the center where this is. It'll enlarge from that point outwards. So if you do it and press up, you can see it enlarges, enlarges those two, but it enlarges them from there going outwards, which is not good. That's not what we want. As you can see, it looks a mess. So undo that. And it works the same the other way, which works down and inwards if you drag it down, which looks quite nice. Looks like a corridor or something stretching off into the distance, but it's not. It's completely flat. So we do want that, yeah, anyway, just explaining what that means. And the circle one in the middle just means around. So, yeah, we can move it all around wherever you want. Multiple extrusions. We look at that. Good then, it? Right. So let's undo that. And let's go on fast extrude. We got our basic beginning of the mug there. So let's use in the extrusion again, we'll move that out again a little bit because we don't have large handles on these things. But now I go back on the universal manipulator here which restores this gizmo. And you can see you've got arrows like you just had on the extrusion tool. So that will take it in that direction, that will take it that way, and that will take it side to side which you can only really tell if you're above or below. Now you can tell it in front as well, but um, then you got that which and and that one which, you know, am I forwards, backwards, what am I doing? You can lose yourself, see? That's how deep that is. And it didn't look like that from the front. So, yeah, it's all about, you know, getting the correct view for what you're doing. And because we're working on our cup from the side, and then you have these, uh, the squares, and they are exactly the same as it was in the extrusion tool, kind of, because they're only moving the surface. These are uh, scaling the surface that we've already extruded, because they're still um, selected in blue, like blue. We can down, and I'll shrink each one down towards the middle. So shrinking the overall height of it that way. Or again, we can have the width of it. So we'll do that one. Width in. As you can see, it's nice and uniform. If it was that one there and that one there, then of course they would be squished together as well as being shrunk. And then you have forwards, which because they're flat surfaces, it won't really do much of anything to them. And the one in the middle is to do it in all directions. So it just depends where you drag when you um when you clicked on it and it'll do sort of weird stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat>
So let's undo that, holding the control down to control Z. Um, then you have these things here, and you're probably wondering what they are. Oh, you might not be. I don't know. But that means that they're in between the other bits and bobs. So they can use both of those things. You can see there's green coming onto that one and blue coming onto it as well. So that means that that moves because it's an arrow. It's a corner arrow. And that will allow you to move in both of those directions. That one with the red and the blue will allow you to move in both of those directions and red and green on that one for the final. So that will allow me to move up and straight out which is this way towards the camera towards us now as you can see. So we'll move that in. But you have to be careful with that because you might be moving up slightly and not realise it. And it's the same with that one. You can go side to side and up and down. And it's the same with that with in and out and left and right. So let's undo that to get it back to centre. Whoa. There you go. <clears throat> and then we have these little sticky off things and they're the rotate ones so it'll do it in accordance to wherever the center is in relation to that so if we spin that then the whole thing will re revolve around that one so that one will go in and that one will come out if we do that one because it's that one there see like so but they don't move and leave this in a curved path it only moves to where the circle would allow it to eventually. It doesn't create any extra sort of bits along here to make that into a curve. So we'll undo that. And you got that one with up and down that way. So that will go around sideways. And that comes forward and backwards. And then you have going side to side basically with that one. So we'll undo that because we don't need that. Anyway, there you go. We created that so far. We'll do another extrusion to about there. We don't want the handle to be huge after all. <coughs> and while I still selected, we'll just shrink them down slightly. So we kind of get the shape of the handle. But what we're going to do for the last piece we're not going to extrude again because that we don't want it to go further out because that's, that's a good size handle there. So what we'll do, we'll select that face there and then we'll rotate underneath and we'll select that face there by holding shift down and clicking on the faces. Then we go up to this tool here, the bridge. And it does exactly that. It bridges between two points. Or more if you select more, which you know is a bad thing because you can start getting all confused then. I do. So bridge that. There you go, and you've now got that solid bridge there, which is fine. That's exactly what we need to close that up. So there we got kind of a cup. So what we need to do to make it look more cup-like and less like some sort of weird model is to use smoothing. And we can do that over here where we got symmetry and smoothing. Uh, and these are levels of smoothing. And what we want to do, we want to increase it to 1. The first level of smoothing is what we want. And you can see that makes it nice and round along the sides. And the handle is all nice. And But then we have something weird happening in the top. It looks more like, I don't know, like a, a drum or something. So we'll undo that. So Control z to undo that. And it did it like that because around here there are various lines and what have you to define how tight that already is. But up here you can see there's nothing, it's just a blank face, so there's nothing restraining it from getting it all squished up with the smoothing. Well, you know, it's just too smooth. So what we need to do is create the inside of our cup up there and that will help to sort that out. And it's the same with the bottom bit there. Maybe we click on that. That will end up like if we smooth again see it does it again which is not what we want though the bottom is not so important as the top of course because we'll look it up more usually so if you're not going to be using the bottom then you, know, you can leave it without smoothing the bottom 
you know to any particular degree you can just leave it like that and you don't add any extra lines but for our needs we can add a little bit more right let's work on the top so we go to the extrude again with the control held down or fast extrude you know these achieve similar sort of things and I'll explain those in a minute but let's go with fast extrude and then because we got this selected we're extruding it inwards between size so that's our edge of the mug that's how wide we want the edge of the mug to be and fast extrude is still selected there so we'll take that down inside the mug now because we let go it's done R1 extrusion so if we click on that and drag again it'll do a second extrusion it won't continue from where we left off oh no it does it <laughs> yay shows how much I know doesn't it there you go <coughs> anyway so yeah let's go on that again and then we go down inside you can see it started in your extrusion but we want to make it to about there because with the smoothing thing over here that will give it a nice set of lines to control it a bit and make it so that it doesn't just happen like that so then we'll click off and then we'll click our surface so we want to extrude again because we want this to go all the way down this side we can leave it like that and change it to a, a color for a liquid if you want but um, we can do that separately so we have nice liquid but um, from there we go all the way down inside we need to make sure that we're not too far that's really close so it'll move it up a little bit more because we're about the same width as the ceramic of the cup because if we have the bottom going up inside a little bit to um, give it extra control around there of the smooth then we're going to need um, some space inside and we got that much there which is nice <clears throat> anyway so now we've got our inside there so if we just do this with that line around there for nice tight restrictive thing then we go like that you see it's turned into a kind of a nice mug and you can leave it there or you can work on the extra bits which I'll do now just so you know what's happening so uh, we'll control Z that and go back there right so we're going to use the only other tools that we need in this we'll select the bottom again and now we'll use edge tools Ooh. and we'll go to extract fillets now a fillet is kind of like smoothing something sort of you'll see what, I, what it's like now we do that and we end up with a red line we're like what's all that about then and then we click and drag and you can see it's this is what a fillet is it's kind of like um, a shaved off uh, corner piece really I suppose um, but you can see it creates two extra lines and that's good for what we need you know, it doesn't include the original line that we just had but um, it drags it out into two separate lines which form a nice as you can see it's going to be a nice surface going diagonally down so we got that surface going down there and the surface across the bottom and this going up to there it's all good because now if we smooth it it looks slightly nicer inside now we can sort that starry bit out if you can just about see that but um, we don't really need to at the moment. Um, right, and then we can do the same with the bottom if we just control Z to undo the smoothing. We'll just select the bottom. It works better if you just select face up there and then click on it. So then we'll fast extrude and we'll scale it in. Oop, wrong way. There we go. And then we can let go of that and press control again and fast extrude and go up inside very slightly. I'm going by that height there. And that does that quite nicely there. Going to do it up slightly more, but not too high because of course the inside we don't want to interfere with that. So when we smooth that, that comes out as that. So double click to get rid of it. 
and there's your mug that's the bottom as a mug should be uh, and there's the top as the mug should be again you can smooth it some more if you like and it's a lovely mug there you go <laughs> but you can define things on it more you know the more you spend on it and so on and so on um and that's basically the mug model you know we'll go more into tools and what have you at a later point but there you go a nice mug lovely which you know if you select again you can also rename to mug or cup or some such and you can see it's now called mug down here hey anyway, there you go a nice mug hope it helped